So this leads us to the use case number one, uh, training a smart tool for uh, interactive uh, uh, correct segmentation task. So here is the data that we have. Uh, we have some, suppose that we have a cracks test project uh, with uh, uh, images of interest. And, uh, and uh, in this case, we need to be able to efficiently label uh, uh, very specific data like this, like, like cracks. So it's hard to expect that that pre-trained models are uh, good, uh, will be good with very uh, specialized uh, objects. So uh, let me show you that uh, pre-trained uh, pre model, how pre-trained models will work here. So uh, if I will try to explain the model with a combination of green and uh, red dots, what I actually want from the model, you will see that the model will fail to, to process the cracks. So, uh, as I put more and more uh, uh, green dots to say that the pixels around the area uh, uh, are actual cracks, uh, it, it kind of trying to do something reasonable. But, but if I will proceed uh, doing, doing this, uh, I, will, I will very soon realize that this model is not uh, uh, really helpful uh, uh, for me to, uh, to solve the task. Uh, yeah, so it's just bad user experience uh, to put a uh, huge number of points and uh, achieve achieve like bad, bad results. But but uh, but the task remains. So anyway, I have to be able somehow to efficiently label uh, label these cracks, uh, and and there should be some way to to make it work to make the labeling process efficient. Uh, and and there is a, and. And we can, I can show you su such a way. So, and the, the way is to train actually these interactive segmentation models uh, to, to, to do well on the task of interest. So, uh, let me go back to the projects. And what I have here, I have uh, a training set. So, my training set looks like this. Uh, those are cracks and, and those are actually uh, uh, label cracks. In, in this kind of fashion. So let me just uh, show you uh, a couple of examples here. Uh, so so uh, in, this, in, in this case, uh, I have, and, and some cracks are actually barely visible, actually. So it's, it, it's, it's not an easy training set uh, to fit. Uh, to fit. Uh, okay, so in my project, I have, uh, I have two data sets. Let me go back. So one is for training, uh, and it contains uh, 628 images, and the other dataset is for validation, uh, and and it, it 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 looks actually similar. So it's it it it, it uh, those are different images, but uh, but is taken from the same kind of batch of images. So uh, let me actually illustrate how easy it might be to uh, train models that will leverage this training data uh, and eventually uh, learn how to, uh, how to uh, process uh, cracks in an efficient manner. So to, to address that, what I need to do, I just need to run an app actually. So, uh, so here is the project with my training data. All I need to do uh, is to run an app. Um, so uh, let me see which one. Yeah, so it, this app will be from the neural network section and it's uh, RITM, uh, train RTM. Uh, and, and in this example, say I will pick uh, this GTX uh, uh, machine to perform the training procedure. So let me just run this app. So the app is started, let me open it. Um, so, uh, the first step is just to click download button, so it just summarizes what we have. I have a project with uh, 698 uh, images overall, so let's download that. Uh, 
Uh, the next step is to is, is to pick uh, the uh, the classes of interest, and in this case, we just have one class of interest called cracks. So let's select this class. Uh, the next thing to do is to split somehow uh, the data into training and validation sets, and we can do it either randomly in this kind of fashion, or, for example, I can. Uh, uh, click on this tab uh, based on data set and say that okay uh, this data set that I had that I have should go to training and uh, this data set this, this this other data set should go to validation so that's uh, uh, that's uh, more like a, a determined way not a deterministic way uh, to split the data so next thing for me to do is uh, to 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 say whether I want to apply uh, some data augmentation, I can pick from uh, from some options here. I can define also custom uh, uh, data augmentation pipelines. Let me just take this one, for example. I can also preview. So if I click on preview, it will take random image and show me how data augmentation will be applied. So in this case, it's in, in this kind of way. Uh, okay, uh, I will use this uh, template for data augmentation. So the next thing is to uh, is to pick the backbone. So I will pick like the largest backbone here. Uh, okay, and I will download the weights. Uh, uh, and there is a final step where we have to define some parameters of training. In this case, probably I will say, okay, I will I, I will do like a, a 60 iteration over uh, over the data. And I may also want to reduce uh, input resolution a bit. Probably uh, my I will increase batch size so that I have a bit uh, faster uh, training process. Uh, I may also uh, save checkpoints from time to time. So let me save checkpoint uh, checkpoints every uh, tens epochs. Uh, 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 but uh, anyway, every epoch there will be a validation step, and best checkpoint according to validation will be kept anyway. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Let's 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 take a look at optimize the parameter. So probably I will just increase learning rate a bit here, so uh, uh, like this, and I will and I will uh, leave uh, uh, everything uh, def uh, default uh, uh, default values. I will leave default values here. So so each epoch uh, uh, this parameter will be used to multiply learning rate. So we will actually see that learning rate drops as the the training pro process uh, going on. So, but default values will also work actually. Okay, let me finish this step. That's actually the last step. And the next thing for me to do is just to click a train button to initiate a training process. And what will, what is going on right now is that the data is copied to the GTX machine and all the training will be conducted locally on this machine. Uh, from time to time, we will see some uh, some metrics, uh, but the idea with this uh, uh, agent and cluster is that uh, we pick machine and uh, and this machine is leveraged to conduct all these computations. So and we see that the charts are, uh, are updated in, in in real time regime. So uh, so I think that that the training process will take about. 30 minutes or so. So let's just wait until it completes and, uh, and I will see you uh, after that and we will speak about the results and test uh, the models that we have obtained. So training process is completed now. So we have went through uh, 60 epochs and, uh, and probably this is the chart that we are interested in. So it shows uh, uh, intersection over union uh, on validation uh, data set uh, as epochs goes by. And the highest value here, I think, uh, corresponds to the epoch number uh, uh, 24. So probably we did a bit more epochs that was necessary. But, uh, and, and we have a choice here. We can uh, stop uh, training or we can like we can continue training if I'm not satisfied with uh, with the performance or we can just uh, finish it so let me uh, let me finish the training process and now what's going on is that uh, uh, is that uh, the checkpoints or in more general training artifacts are copied from
from the uh, uh, from the machine that we used uh, to change the model, so it's GTX machine, uh, to the main server. So it will take a bit of time for those checkpoints to be uh, uploaded. Um, and after that, we can take this one of these checkpoints and see, and, and try to see, and see what uh, how the model performs. Uh, so uh, so the app generates so the app the session is finished here, and uh, the app generates for us the path where the training artifacts are stored. So let's click on that to see. Um, so there is a folder and here is checkpoints, and and. Uh, so, those are uh, checkpoints that we saved from time to time, but I think we are interested in this one. So, uh, so if we go back, we'll see that epoch number uh, 24 produces the highest score on the validation set. And here, here is the best checkpoint that corresponds to this epoch. And what I could do next is just to copy path to this checkpoint and uh, and just uh, deploy this model. So I'll go to neural networks and to uh, interactive segmentation and I am interested in this uh, this app so let me run that. Uh, I will I will run this app on say GTX machine also and I want to run not not a pretend model but rather a custom one so I will just paste the path to the checkpoint uh, and then uh, run the app. So the model is successfully deployed, and let me actually see how it performs. Uh, uh, probably I should do one more thing here. I have several smart tools deployed, so let me uh, take a look at the running sessions. And the one that uh, that we trained is this one. Uh, so let me actually uh, give it uh, 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 give it a name so that it easier to distinguish between two deployed models. So I'll just say that it is model uh, trained to process cracks. So let me just update the name, and then um, I will go and uh, to to the projects. And here is the images that we uh, that we try to process with the default model. And let me try to process this with this model that we have trained. So smart tool is selected here, and what I can do here, I can pick from the deployed model. So example, you see this one uh, with the description of cracks is the one that we have trained. So I'll pick this one, and I'll probably just uh, select here the large portion of the image, and I will move a bit this uh, green point to. Uh, uh, that so that it corresponds to the uh, uh, ghost on the cracks here, uh, and 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 you probably see that the recognition uh, is quite is quite good here. So uh, so from the first shot, the model uh, the model uh, 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 the model takes these cracks and does a good job of segmenting them. Uh, we can play a bit more with this model. So for example, this is like hard thing to label manually. But, but you see that uh, that our model uh, does very good job here. So I can like extend this scene a bit like this. So uh, it's 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 way more convenient to uh, to to work with these models rather than to do everything manually. So let's see if we can put a green dot here and if the model will take this. Yeah, you see, like I put the dot and this missing crack was automatically uh, uh, segmented. And let's try uh, another one. So this one, for example, I will also take a portion of the image here, and probably I have to move a bit the point. Uh, so you see, it's like it's 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 working in a kind of uh, good way here, and it reacts to this uh, feedback. Uh, 
so uh, so if we pre-train the model, it it is it is way more uh, convenient to pre-train the model first rather than use brush uh, to label all these cracks uh, all these cracks manually. Let me actually take one step further, and what I want try to do uh, is to apply the same model on uh, uh, to the videos. And that will illustrate nicely another concept that once we have a model, we might have very various interfaces that may uh, that may be used to uh, that may be used to uh, interact with the model. So probably I will create a, a class here for cracks. So let me quickly do that. Cracks and say something. I want to take something bright here, some bright color, and the shape will be bitmap. In, in, in this case, so so this smart labeling tools uh, outputs bitmaps. Uh, okay, let's pick some video. I don't know. Uh, maybe say this one, the old one. Uh, yeah. So let's 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 inspect the data a bit. Maybe turn off the sound and. Yeah, so that's, those cracks are actually barely visible. So let's see if we can uh, if we can um, uh, uh, if we can achieve uh, good results here. So I will again I will use this, this trained model. So uh, so the cracks the crack actually barely visible. So let me try to, uh, to 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 work with that here. So you see it's kind of uh, it's working good. So it uh, maybe. Uh, there is missing part here, but I can uh, I can correct that. And what's cool about uh, about that is that say uh, in this video labeling tool I can enable this mod uh, clone figure on uh, press right arrow and go to the next uh, to the next frame so that next the, the, the crack on the next frame is also uh, automatically recognized. And I can proceed. Uh, I can I can keep actually doing that. Uh, and if our model models works in a really good way, then we might uh, be able to really quickly label uh, probably the most uh, complex uh, data structure modality like videos. So point cloud might be like more complex. But but here is what what we have achieved here. So let me show you quickly uh, the the result of our action. So. Uh, what we have done is that we have labeled uh, this uh, uh, crack on multiple uh, on multiple uh, frames. Probably uh, this part should be erased. Actually, we can do it easily with the brush. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, that's it with uh, this example. Let's move on to the next uh, to, the, to the second case.